All right, our last lesson with angles and arcs with circles has to do with angles inside the circle. We have talked about what happens when the vertex is in the center, where the angle is equal to the arc. We have talked about what happens when the angle vertex of the angle is on the circle. The angle is half the arc. We talked about what happened when the vertex is outside the circle in these three situations. The angle is half of the difference between the arcs. And today we're going to focus on what happens when the angle is inside the circle. Now notice when the vertex is in the center or it's on, we only intercept one arc. When the vertex is outside, we intercept two arcs. And that's why we had to do something with both of the arcs, so we subtracted them. In this case, notice that the vertex of the angle is inside the circle, somewhere not in the center. So it's right here. There is the vertex of our angle. And so we have our angle, we have this side that goes out and it captures M. And we have this side of the angle that goes out and captures N. Here's the problem. This angle on this side and this angle on this side are congruent because they're vertical angles. But it is obvious that these arcs are not congruent to each other because this vertex is closer to one side than it is to the other, and that's what makes them different sizes. But they do have a relationship, and that relationship is that you can take half of the sum. Okay, so half of the sum, and what it would look like if you color it kind of like we did those outside angles is you focus on these arcs. Those are the intercepted ones. Those are the ones that you care about. Okay, so let's look at this problem right here. We've got our vertex, and again, we would always want to pay attention to how they are arranged because when we start mixing them up, you're not always going to know where they're going to be. This vertex, here's my angle, right, this angle one, it has its vertex there inside the angle. If I trace the sides of my angle on this side, I get this arc. And if I trace the sides of my angle on this side, I get this arc. And yes, you have to do both because of that vertical angle situation. So we care about this arc and we care about that arc, or the arcs that fall in that highlighted piece. Well, because the vertex is inside, we instantly know that the angle is half the sum. So I write it like that, just to remind me what I'm doing before I actually need to do it. So I have the two arcs that I need, so I just add them up. So angle one is equal to half of 120 plus 98. Add those two together, 120 plus 98, then divide by two. Don't forget, you've got to do this in two separate pieces, or you have to do 120 plus 98, and then divide by two in parentheses. If you don't use parentheses and you do it all in one step, it will be wrong. So we find out that the measure of angle one is 109 degrees. Now, <clears throat> this one is a little bit tricky because the angle that I'm asking for is not actually the angle that I have the arc measures to. What I want is angle one. Well, angle one intercepts this side and the flip side of angle one intercepts that. Well, I don't have that. Okay, so there's a couple of things that you can do. Remember that these intersect inside and they form linear pairs. So let's go over here and let's just call this angle two. Well, angle two then is the same, it's interior, the vertex is inside, not in the center. And so what we have is then we capture these two arcs. Again, the angle is half of the sum so in this case, it'd be angle two is equal to half of 53 plus 41. So 53 plus 41 is 94, and divide that by two and you get 47. Now be careful, that is this angle, right? That's angle two. Angle two is 47. I wasn't asking for angle two, I was asking for angle one. So angle one then, would be 180 minus 47. These are kind of like a puzzle. You have to play around with them until you can figure out what you need, 133. Now, another way that you could do that is even though I don't know individually what these are, um, I do know what they would add up to be because I know that these would be 360 minus 
that 53 plus 41. So whatever they are, however they are individually, I know that these together add up to 266. I just did 53 plus 41 and subtracted that from 360 because full circle is 360. Okay, well, if I take that and divide by two, I didn't actually have to physically add them together. I just knew they were already added together. So I can divide by two and guess what you get? 133. So you can do it either way, whatever makes the most sense to you. Okay, I want angle DBC. So DBC is this angle right here in the middle where, well, it's not in the middle, it's in the center of the circle. So it's inside the circle. Um, DBC is this angle right here, so it captures this, intercepts that arc, CD. Actually, that would be, a, we would need to name that as a major arc. And then we've got this other flip side, that's 55. So what we care about is what is intercepted in between. So we care about what's inside these highlighted pieces. I just find sometimes it's easier to keep up with it if you highlight it, because then you'll ignore the rest of the stuff. The vertex is inside. That means that the angle is half of the sum because there are two and I got to do something with them. When it's outside, you subtract. When it's inside, you add. Looks like a big plus sign right here in the middle. Okay, so the angle that I'm looking for, the measure of angle D, B, C is equal to half of the sum, 185 plus 55. So add 185 plus 55. Divide that by 2, and you get 120. So this is half of 240, and you get that it is 120 degrees. And then I could find all the other little pieces in there if I needed to. <clears throat> now, notice on these next two, I gave you the angle, and I'm asking for the arc. That's okay. Same thing, right? We have a formula for that. Notice that your vertex is inside. We notice that we need to deal with this angle, captures, intercepts this arc, this angle on the other side, because we got to deal with both of them, intercepts that arc, and we know that we're talking about these two pieces. Now the problem is, I don't know how big one of those pieces is, but that's okay, I have a formula, because I know that the angle is equal to half the sum. So I'm just going to substitute in what I know. The angle, which is 70, is equal to half of the sum. The sum of what? Well, I'm going to call this x because I don't know what else to call it right now. I need a variable for it. So it would be 75 plus x. Now, similar to what we did yesterday, if 70 is half, then that means 140 is whole. And so that helps us to get rid of that one half, right? We're multiplying both sides by two if you want to think about it. Now, that's not the only way to do it. You can distribute, but then you're going to end up dealing with half of 75, which is a decimal, and then half of x, which is okay. You can do that, but it's just not as pretty. So we just take 140 and subtract 75, and we get that x or um, x or arc sn in this case. Um, the computer sometimes has a hard time with that symbol. That's also another way we could do the measure of arc sn. That you might see it that way sometimes is 65 degrees. Okay, so try this one. I'll work it um, and then we can talk about it, but you can also pause it and try it on your own and see if you can do it. The vertex is inside, so you want to follow those steps. The angle is half the sum. I'm going to work it. You can follow along. Now, notice what I'm going to do, right? Make sure you set it up correctly. The angle is equal to half of the sum between them. What we care about is here and here come these little butterfly wings. Um, so we set it up. Again, if 105 is half, then 210 is whole. We find out that arc FE, this piece right here, the measure of arc FE is 80 degrees. Okay, so that pulls everything together. Um, we've got our vertex in the center. 
We got our vertex on, we had our vertex outside, and then today we added our fourth and last, that our vertex is inside but not in the center, okay? So the angle is equal to half of the sum.